Hello everybody, so um, this is going to be a video again mostly on trees but I'm very excited to show um, some vast improvements uh, to the trees. So first off, um, you may notice my frame rate is absolutely terrible. This is because the lighting is currently being generated. So just give it a second and my frame rate will turn back to normal. <laughs> it's not the trees, trust me, the lighting takes, it's a big calculation so it takes a while to um, do the lighting. So you can see it kind of creep up the hill and do the do the lighting stuff, whatever, yada yada yada, it's baking, and it should finish now. Okay, now my frame rate's back to normal. So, look at all these trees, they're beautiful. I actually, I'm pretty proud of um, procedurally generated forest that we have here. I think it looks really nice. Um, but we have these pretty cool looking mountains with uh, trees on them. They used to grow on the side, they don't do that anymore. Um, but a couple of things that you probably didn't notice um, already that I have like already looked at. Um, if you if you guessed them, congratulations because you have a good eye. Um, but here they are. So first thing you may not have noticed is trees are shadowed. So you noticed um, this object thingy here is casting a shadow onto these trees, and they are darker than if uh, these trees that are in the sunlight. Um, it makes sense. Of course, so um, and this gives a really nice looking effect. I'm I'm pretty proud of how um, this uh, shading looks on the trees. Um, but with this new tree system, basically what I'm doing instead of combining meshes and rendering that, what I'm doing is I have a single mesh and I'm pushing um, custom render matrices onto the stack, onto the render stack, and um, taking the original mesh, uh, translating it, scaling it, and angling it to wherever I want. So I'm iterating over basically all the trees, drawing their mesh, um, after pushing a custom position onto the render stack. And this uh, allows me to more easily control individual trees while maintaining a decently high frame rate. Of course, it won't be as fast um, as just having less meshes. Of course, less meshes equals um, less CPU calculating. But um, it, this allows me to do way more manipulation with stuff like shadow trees. This allows me to do way more manipulation with stuff like LODs. That's the second thing that uh, I'm explaining right now. We have LODs. You may notice if I do that, the trees kind of pop in and out. It's a little weird. Um, but basically, I'm far enough away where the detail on the tree um, goes or de um, decreases, and uh, I because I don't not I'm like I'm not close enough to be to render all the detail on the tree. I mean, come on, am I really looking this close just so I can get like that the detail on the bark? Like, hmm, yeah, I'm looking at that bark. That's some nice bark, like. 5,000 meters away. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. That's just kind of weird. <laughs> but um, LEDs are successfully uh, implemented. The frame rate is way better than it was before, and it generates literally like a hundred thousand to a million times faster because I don't have to iterate over all of the trees. So literally, let me reload the script, and this is how fast it generates. And boom, it's already done generating. Now just to do the lighting, but lighting takes forever because it's lighting, and you know it's it's lighting. Um, there you can see the lighting doing its thing. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. I'm happy with how the trees look right now. Um, the next thing I guess would be like rocks and shrubs and stuff like down here, uh, stuff like this. Uh, but these are actually built into the model. Um, so yeah, stuff like that probably would create a really nice looking um, like detail to this like bottom mesh forested area. I think that would look really nice. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. But another thing, um, I was recently playing around with some stuff with the terrain and I decided to take every chunk and mirror it. And it gives it actually a pretty interesting effect. So um, you take the chunk and you like you, you mirror it. Like you like you take two chunks, you take one chunk and then you take another one and you mirror it like um, on an axis. And you get this kind of cool looking cave world with what appears to be overhangs. 
Um, I was kind of worried about overhangs. It's pretty difficult due to how the terrain works. Um, it was it's never it wasn't ever built for overhangs, so a lot of stuff breaks, um, including trees, of course. I mean, that's obviously not intended. Um, but you get this really nice looking like uh, <laughs> as the lighting generates. You get this really nice looking like arcs and stuff inside of the caves and I'm I kind of kind of kind of digging it. It looks pretty neat. Uh, I'm not sure if this will be the in the official mod. The um, obviously due to how kind of weird and buggy it is, uh, the lighting down here is getting mirrored and put up there even though like like this area up here should not be getting sunlight, but it is. So it looks kind of off. Um like like there would have to be another sun like there it, it would be weird but i don't know it looks it looks kind of kind of cool i'm not gonna lie um so i'll see i'll see what you guys think about this um but other than that trees i am extremely proud of the trees right now uh so i'll probably the, only, the last thing to really do with them is um to add a um collisions to them because currently they don't have collisions and i'm not sure I may live stream it because I feel like I should at least do like a live stream. That'd be pretty cool. I'm not sure, because um, maybe maybe some people want to see the development. I don't know. I don't know. I'll see what I can do. Um, but yeah, that's about it for now. Next video, I will probably just be going over tree collisions and what I want to do um, with this.